My name is Stephanie Keyes. I'm a Toowoomba-based architect with a passion for the built heritage. I'm so pleased to be here today to share my thoughts about what makes Toowoomba City Centre special. Personally, I love that we have so many historic buildings, as I believe they are the key to unlocking the stories of our past, if you know how to read the buildings. Often we experience the stories on a subconscious level in the way we react to the spaces and places around us. I hope that in sharing my stories today, it makes you think about the places and spaces that you love in the Toowoomba City Centre and what your vision for its future might be. For me, as I walk through Toowoomba City Heart, my head is alive with a vision of the past. The streets, laneways and buildings bring these stories of the past alive through the very fabric and in the language of the architecture. There are clues to the past everywhere, in street names, historic signage, and sometimes hidden a bit more subtly in the architectural design and details, just waiting to be unlocked. I love that so many of these historic places are finding new uses to keep our city centre alive. And I think it's the historic character and scale sympathetically overlaid with those new uses that really attract us to those places and make them so successful. I'd like to share a couple of examples of projects that I've been lucky enough to work on, just to illustrate this idea of the stories and those, those spaces. And I hope it encourages you to look up and around and experience your city centre in a slightly different way. So the first place I'd like to share with you is the Westpac building, or former Westpac building, once the Bank of New South Wales, now called the Bank or the George Banks building on the corner of Margaret and Ruthven Street. The bank building is located on Toowoomba's most prominent corner and it's an imposing sandstone building that features the language of classical Greek and Roman temples and buildings with its giant order Doric style columns and pilasters arranged in a strict geometry and rhythm typical of those buildings. Translating this architectural language into words, this building speaks even to the casual observer of solidity, dependability, strength, security and tradition exactly the traits you look for in an institution that you are wanting to trust your hard-earned money to. Recently, the bank's been converted into a retail flat space on the ground floor with office space in the centre and my favourite part, the rooftop bar. Architecturally, the grand scale tenancy on this prominent corner would be perfect for a large retailer's flagship store wanting to make a bold statement about their product. I'm particularly fond though of the roof space. What was once the outdoor and laundry area for the bank manager's family who lived on the first floor, and this was quite common in the city, like that a lot of people lived above the places that they worked. But now this outdoor space and you know utilitarian, very boring laundry space is now a fantastic bar and restaurant, which has made this building and the rooftop accessible to us so we can all enjoy those amazing views over Toowoomba. I, I think that the owners have been very clever too in calling it the George Banks building because that refers to, yes, a, a fictional banker, George Banks, in the Mary Poppins story, but it, it refers to the building's past. It also refers to the PJ Travers book, um, Mary Poppins, and she was a banker's daughter and in fact lived in our region. So it's just a terrific way of reinterpreting those stories for us to enjoy today. In contrast, the second example I'd like to give you today is the Friendly Societies block, now CUA's retail space and community hub and part of the Walton Store Cafe and Entertainment Precinct. Um, it uses a very different architectural language to that kind of grand, imposing sandstone building. It's much less imposing, obviously, and uses details more typical of domestic architecture or houses, such as the residential small-scale windows, which are set beneath a really lovely terracotta tiled awning, which is quite unusual in a city building, and it, you know, pretty su timber supporting brackets, very recognisable. And to me, it speaks of a building that wants people to feel comfortable and welcomed, more at home than you would be in that grander scale bank building. And really, that's just what the Friendly Society was all about. It was, and still is, a member-owned society that offers access to docs doctors and a pharmacy at affordable rates for its subscribers. This, and other societies like it, existed before Australia had a welfare system. And in fact, they actually lobbied to create the welfare system that we have today. Um, I love 
I think it's just fantastic that the sign still survives above to tell us this story in a really obvious way, but only if you're really looking up into those buildings to, um, to discover that. Do you think it's coincidence that this building uses such a soft, easily identifiable kind of language? I don't think so. How appropriate then that the new use is all about community with the CUA having their retail space and community hub on the ground floor, offices above, but it's also part of that Walton store cafe and entertainment precinct and now links into that laneway, um, which is just, yeah, very appropriate. I'm sure the Friendly Society would love that that's now an actual community space. Um, so as you may have guessed, I, I, I'm really impressed that the original story and character of these two buildings is actually integral to the design and the use of their new, spa of their new spaces, of these new spaces. Um, architects call this ad adaptive reuse and these are good examples of how the most successful heritage places, how their reuse aligns in some way with their original use or intent, or as I like to describe it, their architectural stories. There are so many more examples in Toowoomba and I think it's, it's something that we are doing really well and I'd love to see more of in the CBD, in, our, in our, all of our city heart. And that, you know, other examples are the Longs Quarters or Muller Brothers and um, the upcoming Rose Building as well, just to name a few. I think the other heritage aspect that I really love about our city and relates to our grid set out, grid, the grid set out of our street, is our rediscovery of the back laneways. The rediscovery of our back laneways is just another way that these heritage places are coming alive. Once the domain of carriages, the stables, you know, the working end of the buildings, it was the, you know, industrial um, workshops above the shop fronts and, you know, full of night carts collecting the night soil. These laneways are now, you know, a centre in our city for art and food and, you know, drink and entertainment. And I think uh, part of that has been led by the terrific imagery of the First Coat artists who've really essentially created an amazing outdoor gallery for all of us to enjoy. And I think one of the successes about these spaces is just the small scale, you know, the, the, the back of bar wonder or, you know, the street food that we sort of experience in those spaces and that we can see the backs of the buildings. We can still see that story, the materials, the form of the building, all those things just remain in place, but we're just using them a bit differently. And I think, um, that, that sort of that scale, that very human scale and small scale and the intimacy of those spaces with that amazing artwork just give them this incredibly unique Toowoomba character. Um, I guess I'm lucky that my research for various architectural projects has given me this little bit of knowledge about you know those stories and what those buildings, the history of those buildings and what they're telling us. But I think that we're really lucky as a community that those buildings actually remain as the keepers of those stories and I'd love to see that remain in the Toowoomba of the future. I'm privileged um, to have been able to give you this glimpse into some of those stories and perhaps inspire you to think about your own history or experience of the city centre and places, places that are special to you. Um, and that, that makes you think about well, what do you want that city centre to feel like in the future? A sustainable city for me is one that retains our heritage places, keeps that, that intimate scale and importantly keeps the key features of those original buildings but makes use of them in new ways that are compatible with their original design and their intent. That way our architectural stories are retained for everyone to access, whether you remember how they were in the past or only know how they are now. We still experience that you know, in a physical sense, um, whether we can read it in the architectural language or not. The best new building should be designed in a way that respects and celebrates this history and those buildings which are living links to our past, our collective memory of place, if you like. To me, this is key in making the city as it grows, which it inevitably will, um, 
but we want it to be more inclusive and sustainable from an environmental and social perspective. So I'd like to challenge you to think about what the future for the city looks and feels like for you and perhaps what you think we should be doing to achieve this. So please get involved and have your say on the Toowoomba of 10 years time and your vision for it. Um, so check out yoursay.tr.qld.gov.au. Thank you.